Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I didn't hear anything. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Much better, mashallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassili amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I wanted to share with you today, inshallah ta'ala, one dua where the Prophet وسلم, told the companions and us after them very beautiful words. And in that dua, in the conclusion of that dua, he told us whoever heard it must learn it. So if you never heard about that dua before this night, your homework, your job is to memorize it, inshallah ta'ala, grab it from the internet, make it your homework, inshallah ta'ala. Is that a promise? I can't hear anything. Birmingham, is that a promise? Yeah. Allahu Akbar, inshallah ta'ala. In that dua, my brothers and sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa made a promise. In that dua, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made a promise that anyone recites it will not feel depressed or anxious or sad anymore. That doesn't mean that you not experience the sadness, rather you'll be able to cope with those emotions better. And as you have seen in the past some years now, people are talking about mental illnesses, depression, anxiety and so on. Where the Prophet وسلم, whom we believe was sent from high by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the final messenger, brought to us this news that whosoever recites it will not feel depressed again. But the other command that he gave is that whoever heard it must learn it. What is that dua? Allahumma inni abduk. The Prophet ﷺ started this dua by saying, Oh Allah, I am your slave. Acknowledging the reality, our reality, that we are the slaves of Allah. That's your job. That's my job, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And Allah is our master. And as such, we must obey him, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. You love cigarettes so much. You love smoking so much. Allah said no. We hear the commands and we obey. We have no any position to argue with Allah the Creator. Hijab is good for you, sister. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so. It's difficult, it's hard. We acknowledge the challenges, but it is a command from Allah. We don't negotiate the commands of Allah. Allahumma inni abduk wa abnu abdik and I am the son of your male slave. My father is a slave. Wa abnu amatik and my mother is your slave. Nasiyati biyadik, my forelock, my destiny, everything is in control of you, ya Allah. Ma'din fiya hukmuk, your judgment upon me is assured, it's gonna pass. Adlun fiya qada'uk, your destiny upon me is just, I deserve everything that you've written for me. Why the Prophet ﷺ is making this very long introduction? If you have noticed, he didn't ask Allah for anything yet. He's only making an acknowledgement of this reality. And then he goes on to say, أَسْأَلُكَ بِكُلْ اسْمٍ هُوَ لَكْ I ask you, Ya Allah, by every name you have named yourself with. أَسْأَلُكَ بِكُلْ اسْمٍ هُوَ لَكْ or you have revealed it in the book, in your book, in the Quran. Or you have taught it to any of your slaves. Or you have kept it hidden in the world of the unseen with you. Why, O oh Prophet of Allah, why are you making this very long introduction to ask Allah for one thing? 
And that's the secret of the dua. And taj'ala al-Qur'ana rabi'a qalbi. I beg you, Ya Allah, to make the Qur'an the spring of my heart and the light of my chest and the banisher of my sadness, depression and anxiety. Allahu Akbar. There are two secrets in this dua, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Number one, the dua itself, which the Prophet Sallallahu told us to memorize it and to learn it. And number two is the Qur'an. Because there is no point to make that dua without actually having the Qur'an as your companion. Because the Prophet is asking Allah to make the Qur'an the spring of his life, the center of his attention, the compass that will guide him through in this dunya up until Jannatul Firdaus. Say Ameen. I didn't hear guys. Say Ameen. Wake me up UK please. Come on. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah. Now the problem is, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that along the journey of life, there are so many things that we get exposed to that shut off that light of our hearts, that come in between the Qur'an and ourselves. And apparently we enjoy these things for a little while, but it never satisfies us fully. It never makes us fulfilled really. One of those things is music. How many of you here are still listening to music and your favorite singers? Raise up your hand. Do not worry. Mufti Mink is not here. <laughs> Yalla, raise up your hand. Be, be honest, inshallah. We wanted to see. Yani, Allahu, I, nobody's going to judge you, Allah. Don't worry. I was a musician before. Originally, I was there. So don't worry, inshallah. How many of you have heard those songs uh, there's one very popular song I remember. Uh, I believe I can fly. <laughs> yeah, I know you know it. Well, I know. <laughs> I know. Is somebody already singing it in his heart now? Ah, you know. <laughs> somebody is ready to fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I said that before. This guy either a liar or a jinn. Because Allah says in the Quran, only jinn can touch the sky. Now, by Allah, my brothers, my sisters in Islam, give me one benefit of listening to this. One benefit. Tell me what will you actually benefit from when listening to this other than just wasting your life away. How many of you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes you are driving your car and you decided to listen to Al Quran and after an hour drive, maybe or more, you become bored. Then you inserted some Indian songs. Yeah? Or whatever else, Yani songs. Right? And you felt that you are more entertained when you hear these songs and music than actually listening to the Quran. How many of you have heard a song and you cried? But you've been listening to the Quran for so many years, you never shed a tear. The reason is the light of your heart, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is shut because music, I also, I always say that, mu and I'm saying this by experience, and I want anyone to challenge me on this. Music is the only thing or one of the top things that competes with the Quran. Your heart cannot take both, either the Quran or music. You choose, you decide. There was a song. Back in the days, we used to give to our children movies and dolls. It's called, I am a Barbie. Huh. I'm a, I, and I don't want to say it because it would appear as if I'm declaring. <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life is what? Tell me. Huh. Tell me. Life is a, a plastic or something. Or fantastic something like that and then the worst part in that song you can brush my hair undress me everywhere inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. we used to we, we used to give these songs to our children and he, and some people say brother you're so fanatic man these are dolls brother toys not anymore 
Not anymore. Barbie is a real lady now. Everybody is looking at those movies. Not only that, we have a Barbie man now. His name is Kin. Inna lillahi wa inna And you hear those songs and those lyrics. Wallahi, our imaginations light up. Brother Ayman mentioned that I'm specialized in behavioral addictions. And one of those behaviors, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is watching movies and sitcom and... How many of you here are still into movies? Raise up your hand, don't worry. Don't worry, Wallahi, don't worry. Fast and Furious, anyone? Fast and Furious? Ten parts, Allahu Akbar, ten. Ten movies, is it? Or nine or some, ten. How many of you here love to drive cars? Raise up your hand. How many of those who love to drive cars have watched Fast and Furious? How many of those people who watch Fast and Furious and love to drive, imagine themselves driving like those actors? Allah, look at this. The theory has been proven because our brain craves novelty. Our brain craves what? Novelty, imaginations. So the moment you see a car flying from the train into the river and everybody's okay, no one is injured, mashallah. Then you start imagining yourself in that scene. There was a man by the name of Nicholas Templeton who had a, uh, a theory about butterflies. He used to observe the, the life of butterflies and then he created butterflies made of cardboards, unreal, but he made them bigger than normal sizes and he added colors that usually are not to be found in any of the butterflies on planet Earth. It was a very long research. He won many prizes on this. Search his name, Nicholas Tembergen. And to his astonishment, he found that the male butterflies, instead of mating with the female butterflies, they left them and they started mating with the fake cardboard butterflies because they are bigger and look more beautiful. This is called supernormal stimulus. The study called supernormal stimulus. And this is exactly what the movie industry and pornography industry are trying to produce. They are trying to take you from your wife and husband and make you addicted to imagery and pixels. And, and as a result, wallahi, my brothers and sisters, for over 22 years now, been dealing with people who are drowning into this addiction, many people would end up in divorce because they have left the real life partner. And this is the punishment, by the way. You resort to haram, Allah will take the halal away. May Allah protect us all. I mentioned about the Indian songs earlier, but I used to love Indian movies. And I want to share with you a secret, but don't tell anyone. That's the deal, all right? Especially Akhi Ayman. So there was this movie called Mard. Anyone here from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh? Okay. Amitabh Bachchan, anyone knows this guy? Allah protect us. There was this movie where the, the first scene in the movie, imagine this with me, the first scene in the movie, the British, I think, invading this village and the man wanted to protect his wife and an infant child. So he brought a horse, he put his wife on the horse, he gave her the child, but he remembers something. He wanted to create a mark on the body of his kid so that he can recognize him later, maybe 30 years later. You know Indian movies, they go into a lot of imagination, mashallah. So of all the options in the world, what did he do? He took a knife and he started writing the name of the child on his chest. An infant, newly born baby. With a knife, not with a marker, not with a pen, nothing. With a knife. And he started writing and the blood starts coming out and the baby is crying and the music man. In the background, they always used to bring this old lady in the movies. I don't know. She used to sound like this. Ah. So. She will make my mom cry all the time. So living, living in this scene and seeing the, 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 you know, the atmosphere and so on, a young me, I became Amitabh Bachchan. Well, I went that night to the bathroom and I looked into my father's stuff and I found a blade and I went into my chest and I start writing 
Mard. Now, you call me, brother, you need mental you know, assistance. You know, you, brother, you need some help. I agree. But you guys all said you wanted to drive like fast and furious. So we're all sick. You see, this is what addiction leads a person to. The more you stare, the more you store. And that's why the Prophet wasallam said that the stare, lustful stare, is an arrow from the arrows, the arrows of shaitan. So the more you look at these things that can lead you to unhealthy behavior, most likely you will end up committing those acts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. My brothers and sisters in Islam, I have only a few minutes remaining. Today is a bit tight for me, but I wanted to experience one thing. There is an exercise that I usually do whenever I attend a conference, but I never tried it in this very large number. So I'm going to give it a try, but I want you to be cooperative. Are you ready, inshallah? So how to be cooperative? When I give you an order, please proceed without talking. Is that okay? No talking whatsoever. The first instruction is, please stand up. No talking. Everyone stands up. MashaAllah. You guys listened very well, MashaAllah. Barakallah feek. Second, I wanted to remind you, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that Palestine, Palestine will not return unless and until we improve our faith, we improve our Iman, and we love each other genuinely for the sake of Allah. And we never had interest to bash each other, to tarnish the image of one another. If you really want Palestine to come back, this is just the beginning. And there is one habit that the Prophet ﷺ and the companions used to practice back in the days that I felt that it is necessary for us to revive. And that is expressing genuine love for one another. So what I wanted to do, inshallah, I want you to look to the person that closest to you and don't go very far. All right? And we'll do the following. Number one, I didn't finish yet. Yeah? Listen carefully. Number one, one person will tell the other, I love you for the sake of Allah. Wait, wait, brother. I didn't finish. I said, why don't you listen, man? I love you for the sake of Allah. The second person will respond and say, may the one whom you loved me for his sake love you also. Is that easy? Easy? Or shall I repeat? One person will say, I love you for the sake of Allah. The other person will say, may the one whom you loved me for his sake love you also. Now, brothers, don't ever run to the sisters and say, sister, I love you for... Yeah, don't, don't, don't be smart, yeah? Brothers to brothers, sisters to sisters, in three, two, one, Bismillah. MashaAllah. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Enough love, alhamdulillah. Sit down now quietly, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah increase that love between one another. Ameen. Say Ameen. Now in three, two, one, everybody quiet. Three, two, one. Shh. You're exactly like my students, mashallah. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah bless you, Arab. Remember, my brothers and sisters in Islam, the dua which I call the heart reliever, which I shared with you earlier. This dua can help us, you know, move past the sadness and the grief that we've been experiencing since the happening in, in our, you know, in, in Palestine. So at least we need to heal, inshallah. So memorize it and let the Quran be your companion in this dunya. Before I leave, I want you to repeat after me, inshallah, as loud as possible. Are you ready? Are you ready? Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! 
Jazakum Allah khairan, my brothers, my sisters in Islam. It was lovely being with you here in Birmingham. Inshallah, looking forward to seeing you again, bithnillah. Don't forget, make dua for our brothers and sisters in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon the martyrs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal their wounds. May Allah grant them patience and perseverance. And may Allah return al Masjid al Aqsa to the hands of the Muslims and the Arabs. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh.